Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we'll look at another cockpit mod. This one, if you have not seen it already, is a bloody fantastic one called the Dual Cockpit, which is, well, what you see right in front of you. It is a singular cockpit that has two seats built inside. Both of them can control everything about the vehicle or ship that you connected this onto, and it comes with a unique way of being able to customize this to your heart's content in the form of changing the colors of the lights, changing what's displayed on the LCD screens, as well as changing the main display, which is this window you see in front of you. You can use this as a transparent LCD screen if you want to have some kind of special reticle, or maybe just a video playing your favorite movie on, if you want to do that. Anyway, yes, once you download this and added it in through the mod menu, you'll simply find this in the spawn menu under the dual cockpit. Grab hold my character, hopping out of here, pressing G, typing in dual, and there it is. It's surprisingly cheap to build, but only comes in a small block form, so that kind of explains why it doesn't cost as much. I'm not too sure why I was saying there's a large block version, because there isn't. Anyway, it costs small steel tubes, bulletproof glass, computers, displays, motors, metal grids, construction components, and steel plates. Not many of each, with the most being bulletproof glass, which is to be expected from something that's basically 50% made of glass. So what we're going to do is have a quick look around the outside of this thing, get a good look at the model, see what we can customize with it and all the different options we can do with it. Then after I'm going to give you a few examples of what you can do with it, with this strange land vehicle that I slapped together, and then a few other bits and pieces which are not really intended, but you can do over here, such as clipping stuff through. Because the second cockpit, despite being a physical thing, being able to be utilized by another player, it, well, doesn't exist when you spawn it in, so you can clip things through. And we'll go through that a bit later on, because it does get a bit wonky. Anyway, my character can now hop back into the seat, grab hold of the free camera, and run towards the very front of this thing, and this is what we get for the dual cockpit. So right in the very middle, we've got ourselves a lovely piece of curved glass, which gives it a very elegant design, and makes it very sleek compared to the standard cockpits in vanilla Space Engineers. Along the top, we've got a light bar, where we can change the color of it. We can't do the individual sections of it, but we can do it all together. And right behind where I'm sitting, you can see another light, which we can change independently of the light above the cockpit. So you have that option if you want to. So you can have a nice bright white color on the outside, and maybe a more warmish orangey yellow color on the inside, just to change the atmosphere. Anyway, going around the edge of this cockpit, we've got some black bars with some metal bars just attached onto them, which makes it look very fancy. And run onto the side here, ignoring the poor magnetic plate and battery I slapped onto the bottom of this thing. That's what we get on this side, it's the same on the opposite. But getting a bit close over to here, was well, this lovely little grid where putting my light on, you can see a bit of detail right behind it. And then we run towards the very back of this thing, here's our door. Doesn't actually open up where we go up to it, simply a click, get inside. And depending on what side of the door you click, will depend on what cockpit you get inside. They're clearly labelled, so you cannot get confused. But then on the left and right hand side, on the very left and right hand side, there's your connection points to funnel of oxygen and to make it properly part of your ship. And all the way up looking down this thing, here we go, we've got our lovely metal grate once again. And there's a very clear view of what's going on down in the middle. Dropping all the way down underneath this thing, here we go, so there's the magnet player slapped on. Nothing much going on behind it, but there's another connection point if you want to use it. And now it's time to go up and inside. So very slowly, now coming all the way up and around like so. Looking at the very back of this thing first of all, we then got a small first aid cabinet, where you can clearly see it's labelled medical, where if you were to push it all the way through, of course there's not going to be anything on the inside here. It's still a nice little touch to have on the inside of the cockpit that you wouldn't normally see. And all the way across, there's the opposite side of the door. There's the blinding white light right above it. And to the opposite side, here we go, got nothing going on with it. You would look all the way down the bottom there, there's our metal grid once again. And we've got a little part right below there that you usually see like the steps are going up and inside of a truck. Anyway, straight to the middle there, pulling away. There we go, we've got some clan cola right in the middle. We've got a bunch of knobs and dials right surrounding it and behind it. This is now CD screen telling us our planetary gravity and atmospheric gravity. There's something that's currently hovering. Not too sure what that is meant to be, but it's just hovering there, so we're going to pretend it doesn't exist. Yes, that's our front panel. Crossed here where I'm sitting, we've got a lovely controller to try this thing around with some more buttons, with even more sitting right behind it, so going past my hand, there we go. And onto the opposite side, there we are with that one. All the way up and looking over to this section, we've got some more LCD screens, once again telling us our gravity, then meters per second, with a couple more buttons right there. Then all the way up to here, in this blank section right in front of us, this is another LCD screen which has a separate control in the cockpit for you to display whatever, which is what I talked about a minute ago. Yes, that's about it for the inside, so grabbing hold of one of these characters, going to this one first of all, coming into the eye menu, into the control panel, 
As you can see, we've got a few controls to go through. We don't need to see that. But these are what we get default with the cockpit. So of course, we've got our spotlights, and then of course, our light that sits right behind us. So if they change this, you can just about make out what's going on. In fact, what I'll do is now make this night time to make it even easier to see. So here we go, that'll do quite nicely. Back into this, troll panel, and then changing the light. There we go, that's the light scene right behind us. And for the one right above us, we won't be able to see it too much until we bring the free camera all the way over. So here we are, here's the blinding white light. Pressing I coming back into this, all the way down to the spotlight. Now we're just going to change that there, the lovely blue colouring. You know, make it super dark blue, and then even darker if you want to do that. We do all the other colours. And we'll create a mini little disco. We're just going to leave it on, let's say, a nice bright pink. That'll do. Bring the free camera all the way back around, looking at like so. And then have got one more set of lights to play around with. So back into this control panel, we then see our dual cockpit HUD. And now we can come back down to the colours. And I'll play around with this. But it doesn't look like it's actually going to be doing anything until we display something on the actual screen itself. So what I've got to do is now come all the way down to wherever it's gone. I always get lost with this. But here we are, we're now going to add a cross, add to selection, and there it is up on the front screen. Grab hold of my character, first pass of view, that's similar to what it looks like. It's a bloody big red call where you can make out what's going on in the middle there. I suppose you could aim any old guns attached onto this. It's back into this, down to the HUDs, changing the colours once again. There we are, it's not really doing anything, is it? Now I'm going to go like that, change the background, completely block out everything going on in front of us. It's entirely up to you what you want to do with this. I'm just going to actually remove this one. And make it back to how it was. And then for the final controls, not too sure why I came out of that. We see we've got our dual cockpit. We've got all of our standard cockpit stuff going on here. So we can control all the LCD screens right below us. We've got a handy bit of information right there telling us any old status with the cockpit. And right at the very bottom, we've got a unique button where it says to restart the cockpit software. So if something does go wrong with it, we have a way to actually restart it without needing to delete the entire thing and rebuild it. Right above here, we've got a few options which are currently greyed out. So when we build this thing up, it's going to add on all the stuff that we talked about and looked at when we went around the outside. So our screen at the front, our passenger seat, the spotlight on top, the interior light, they can all be destroyed, they can all be disconnected if you don't want to have them. So you can customise it to an extent, but if they do get damaged, you have a way to actually place a new one on top, or repair it up and put it back to its full functionality. I'm going to show you that right now, hopping out of the cockpit, grabbing hold of the steel block, and now going to delete the passenger cockpit, so off he goes, he now pops out, now, despite it actually being there, despite it looking like you can actually get inside it, it's now utterly destroyed, we can't interact with it. We need to come back around to this seat, press I once again, troll panel all the way down, now we can go and place the cockpit, there we go, coming out of this, grabbing hold of the other character, we now go all the way up to this once again, and hop back inside, there we are. And of course, I completely forgot, this is the view from the passenger cockpit, so you can't really see too much other than that seat, we'll have to lean over into the driver's lap to see what's going on with that. Yes, that's all we can see from this side, and that's how you repair it up if anything ever took damage. But now what I'm going to do is grab hold of my actual character, hop out of this, and go through a few other examples. So bring the sunlight back around once again, there we go. We're now going to come over to one of the small problems which we can build around if you want to do so. It's going to be a bit risky depending on what you put inside, which can easily damage it. But when you were to place this on a structure, what you're going to find is only part of the cockpit is actually a physical thing. The other parts of the cockpit will pop in once we actually build it in place. So anything that clips over the left-hand side of the cockpit is going to be well merged into the cockpit once you go and place it down. Go and hiding that, coming around over to here. All we can see is the cockpit has been placed down on the good old Dex fighter. But as you can see, a thruster and then a Gatling gun, where the Gatling gun has gone, not too sure where it has gone. It looks like it has been absorbed by the cockpit. So just going to do that one more time. Just go and get rid of the cockpit. There we go. I'm going to put down a Gatling gun on this side. Just going to have it like so. There we go. Put one on top of it. I'm going to build down the cockpit. So we can see it's green build, placing it down. But now there's a bloody great Gatling gun right in the passenger seat. In first person view, that's what it looks like. And yes, you will probably be in a bit of a pickle when you start to fire it. But on the driver's side, we now still drive this thing around. So that is something to be aware of and something to build around. Hopping out of this, coming over to my small example that we whipped together a little bit earlier. This is what you can do, and it does look very snazzy on a land vehicle compared to the standard cockpit, because you've got a massive glass window on the front of it. You can clearly see what's going on without cameras. So hopping into this. Here we go, first person view. Now we're just going to undo the parking brake and drive this thing around. Here we go. Now I've got a very clear view of what's going on ahead of us. No need to actually use a camera. And wow, it just feels very sleek, very elegant, and a very novel thing to have compared to the standard cockpit designs. But as for that, that's pretty much it for all the dual cockpit has to offer. 
It's a fantastic copy to use in your world. Not too sure what's happening there. Yes, it's a fantastic copy to use in your world. If you do want to have something to have where you can bring your friend along with you without building a dedicated seat for them. And of course, it also helps out if you want to have a dual cockpit design on, let's say, a helicopter or a fighter ship. This just comes with a one built in there, which you don't have to use, like you saw earlier. You can't always move the secondary seat off this if you don't want to use it. You can't always clip stuff into it if you want to use that instead. But still, it's another way of getting around it. It does look bloody fantastic for how it's all been designed. So be linked to it, squish it below, do it down, and play around yourself. Highly recommend you do, because it is a fantastic thing to play around with. And does look bloody fantastic overall. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.